So I get asked quite a lot about how to get started with deep learning uh, or AI as a total beginner. So for instance, we have this gentleman that said, hello, I hope you can help me out in my current situation. I'm still a beginner, I learned Python. Now I actually can't decide what to do next. My main target is the AI ML field. I studied PyTorch, but it turned out that I need to learn some maths because I learned that from a bachelor's, so I stopped learning PyTorch for now at least. That's why I started Flutter. It's only no Python and no other language. Now, what is what is your opinion for someone like me who's going to start the bachelor in three to four months? By the way, really cool that he's doing this before he even started by, uh, his uh, bachelor. My take on this is always kind of the same, which is to dive straight into learning the thing you're trying to learn. In this case, it's um, it's AI. I decided to make this video to show you how to get started as a total beginner in deep learning. And at the end of this video, you'll be able to watch a, like a playlist that I'm updating weekly on a very clear generalist path for a total beginner to learn deep learning. The usual roadmap for beginner look kind of like this. You get told that you should first learn linear algebra because deep learning depends on it a lot. Then you should get your stat skills up since deep learning is nothing but complicated statistical learning so that you should be learning how to program since deep learning is happening in code these days like python and then you should get the hang of uh, the data science uh, motion because uh, deep learning system rely on the quality of their data after that you should become good with like shallow ma machine learning systems like svm random forest since they are kind of the precursor for deep learning system and once you've done all of this only then you should start studying deep, deep learning so the issue with this type of bottom up approach is by the time you get to the programming steps like all your motivation is completely dead kind of an issue with deep learning and trying to learn it is compared to the other field because it's an emerging field and it's extremely multidisciplinary. Um, it has a very weird dynamic between like theory and practice. So there's a lot of new groundbreaking research being pumped up like on the daily. It's very, very difficult to keep up even for researchers. Uh, the architecture and technique keep changing. They come back sometimes with old architecture with small twists. So it look extremely complicated from the outside. So the network can be, uh, behave also like in very erratic fashion. Uh, so when they are trained, so there's a lot of arts in training these models. Top of that, to get these models trained, it requires a good level of technical sophistication uh, and programming, which can feel a bit daunting here. So this whole package of complexity uh, is even more problematic given how the actual groundbreaking science is done, like close flow tree and stuff like GPT and whatever. Um, the major leap forward that are done is they're actually done in reverse. So of how other science-based things are, are done. There's even a whole field of interpretability that has been spun out to actually understand how the models are, are being trained, are behaving, why they're doing the things that they're doing. So usually the experiments are carried out and then the results are obtained. And the why the result works is often not fully understood. It's just it just kind of work, right? And it's the results are great. Um, there's a, usually a whole flurry of research afterward that happens uh, to figure out why the the actual result is um, is happening. It will be like it will be like someone coming up with a new type of plane and then uh, not understanding fully how it works, and then we make studies afterward to understand why the plane is actually working. So it's very very experimental. A bottom up approach to deep learning is is a bit flawed um, since even researchers in the field are necessarily applying this kind of like first principle kind of logic. So the roadmap to learn deep learning that I've seen works the best for students is actually to flip it and to start at the top and then uh, make your way down as needed. Um, this is more closely related. Uh, like mimic how the deep learning field is operating. So let's explore what I mean by that. All right, so you start here with zero knowledge. How do we, how do we get you to learn deep learning? So first off, le learning deep learning, even from top to bottom, is not a straight line. There's a graph of things to learn, and it's somewhat kind of ordered. Um, so at the most higher level element, so let's say the framework, that we use to make uh, the deep learning system are closest to your zero knowledge point. It's still a graph though. So there's many element and many sub element hidden away at the node. Programming sense, it's not really just a tree. It's actually a graph. Um, the first thing you need to do is to embrace the fact that learning deep learning is is non-linear. I also mean that you have to set a clear goal while learning deep learning, or otherwise you're going to get lost. Because if you don't know why you're learning this thing, it will be very different. It will, it will be kind of similar to trying to learn, I don't know, like planes, right? What do you want to do? Do you want to fly the plane? Right? Do you want to make the plane? Do you want to make a subcomponent of the plane? Like what do you want to do with the plane thing? So before we go and look at the roadmaps, make sure to set up a clear goal of what you want to accomplish. Um, it will massively help you know where exactly to focus. So I'm going to set like three like rough 
goal that I usually see people ask me. So at the end of the video, I will show you like, I will use these three goals. So the ML engineer, researcher, and AI product to uh, show an example of how to set up these roadmap. So the ML engineer one will be uh, much more heavily focused on programming topic as it's, it's usually a prerequisite to get a job. Kind of look like this, I'll explain it in a few. The research path will rely less on programming and more on the cutting edge research and how to replicate research result. It's more linear, kind of look like this. The AI product thing has more to do with software engineering and how to use pre-trained model, not so much the training portion of it. Kind of, kind of look a bit like this. So the way to sketch out these deep learning path is the same two step process, right? That you should run through. So let's start with step one. So usually like all the learning paths are anchored onto like the same top level component, like whatever you're trying to accomplish, which are usually like the deep learning framework, like the TensorFlow stuff, like uh, PyTorch, JAX, maybe um, FastAI. So these framework, they kind of abstract away all the complexity of those model and give you a high level overview about how to manage these model. And which one to choose will depend on like what you actually are trying to accomplish. If you have never seen a, a deep learning analysis before, like you stop right now and then you go into a few of the link into the description and then you, you get look at like these analysis and how they're they are being like run, run out. It doesn't matter if you don't understand, but what it means here is that you will see end to end what they kind of look like, right? And the understanding of how they, they work is kind of secondary at this point in step one. You just have to understand like, okay, there's something called a notebook here. There's this thing called PyTorch or TensorFlow. And then they're making like these weird movement with something called pipeline. I don't understand the pipe, uh, the Python grammar. I don't even know how to program, but now I see like there's some text being written in like in a small cell. And then like there's some outputs being sorted out. Once you've seen some of the stuff that you are trying to reach to and that you understand the game you're playing, it's all about like understanding each of the individual component. Then it will be very easy. If you have an analysis that you looked at and you're like, like, wow, this is something I would like to replicate. Just look at all the library, all of the things that are being used. And then that's the component that they should be having in your mind. And so even then, right, you can still get pretty lost if you try to understand every internal thing that is, uh, uh, that is happening. So I would always suggest you to either anchor it with something you've seen or a project that you want to do. Um, so if you don't have really an idea for a project or like a realization of some sort, just take something that somebody else have been has been doing and try to put your own twist on it. It's very important here to that you are not getting too lost into the details. Um, it's very, very easy to spend like months and months in tutorials. Understand like enough on this to describe roughly what it does and how to use it. And then you need to get in and out of a lower level concept fast. So you understand roughly what's happening. You roughly understand how to use it. You get up from there, from this, it's a panda thing. And then you start to use it into your project organization. So it's just to bring enough learning back up for your project to move forward or your understanding of some realization to move forward. The stage surface level understanding. Absolutely fantastic. This is great. So step three now is to go for depth. And so the trigger for when to actually go into depth mode is when you're no longer surprised by a new concept or component, right? You look at the stuff and you look at a few of them and like, yeah, I think I understand like roughly what each of these bits are doing. Even if you go for depth, always make sure to keep it anchored still uh, for some project. This is very, very important. Like this will move your learning faster than if you just like try to learn Python or like try to learn linear algebra for the sake of it. Always go deep in understanding something when you're at this step, uh, especially the stuff that are bottleneck for your for learning. Let's say you always go and you look at the some analysis and then the part about like cross-validation, you have no idea what the heck is this is. Like spend time to learn that thing like in depth. So it's always the things that are giving you a very hard time, a hard feeling when you look at them because you kind of don't know what they're doing. So pick very few topic at this point out of the bottom neck and understand them 100%. Don't try to switch, right? Try to really understand them. If you have to take a course in linear algebra to understand the specific thing that is happening, like do that, really do that. Because the, the, the thing with like the deep learning kind of graph of knowledge is that a good understanding in one of these nodes will have massive impact in all the other nodes. Finally, you do the drill down, but don't forget to come back up. Like don't, like if you're, if you're at LAPAC level of uh, learning like a uh, linear algebra and how it's working in the internal of like NumPy, 
you've gone way too far, right? You have to go up. There's infinite depth down there. Okay, enough of the high level overview. Let's jump into the virus roadmap for beginners. Um, th these are rough, rough roadmap. So how the thing looks like, you can swap a lot of things. But for these three paths, machine learning engineer, researcher, um, the AI product thing, I've put like very basic, simple thing you can go from A to, to B uh, in one go. So the roadmap for machine learning engineer, top to bottom will look something like this. Might be a bit confused here because I said top to bottom, but then you have Python at the first step here. Uh, what does that mean? The thing with machine learning engineering is that um, it's first and foremost like a software engineering type of thing. So it's software engineer that knows machine learning. So what I mean by that is that the way a recruiter will evaluate your skill set during the hiring process is going to be centered around programming first as a first filter. So even if you're a great machine learning like engineer of some sort, and you're not able to like solve programming question like a software engineer, uh, you're not going to make it. So solid mastery of programming is absolutely crucial. Also mastery of lead code type of problem is like super important. But I would say you spend a disproportionate amount of time drilling lead code um, because you, you technically have a higher chance of getting a machine learning engineering job by passing the lead, lead code screening, even if you know like next to nothing about machine learning. Yeah, but don't stop there, right? Don't stop there. After that, you, when you have a mastery, you think of like the lead code type of stuff and then those kind of programming puzzle, um, pick one of the framework. So usually it's TensorFlow or PyTorch, depending. And the way to make this choice, like I have a bias for PyTorch, like I, lo I love PyTorch, but that don't, don't just go with, the thing that is kind of popular. The way to make this choice is to look around the company you want to work with and check out what proportion are using what. So if like 99.5% are using MATLAB, you're gonna have to learn MATLAB, right? So select this one carefully. And then after that, you should get accustomed to deploying your model that you're training on like something like Hugging Face to have like an API endpoint for inference. There's a lot of stuff that you can use here. I think Gradio is another one of them. So it's it's important since machine learning engineering is all about like building, deploying, and then monitoring machine learning uh, model. You should be uh, getting comfortable a bit with this. Then you should be comfortable with um, uh, SQL, right? To fetch data from a DB and then do the rest of your pipeline from there. Don't just work with CSV and then get the hang of cloud computing. Nothing crazy here, right? But just to, to host your model somewhere and then put your inference endpoint with an API thing and then to uh, monitor it with like various like cloud stuff. There's a lot of other things that you should uh, be learning, like Airflow, like uh, uh, the, the things about like directed acyclic graph for your analysis and all this stuff. But just this, if you went through this thing, you have the basics to now be a crappy machine learning engineer. Now you just need to level up this thing. The roadmap for research is a lot simpler and there's not any of these like uh, um, software engineering things going on. Um, the first thing you should learn here is the how to read PyTorch based research notebook. Most of the research is done in PyTorch these days. So the best way to do this is to like pick a lab that you like really well and that are exposing like the research online on their GitHub or whatnot and uh, really read their notebook and then try to understand like what is going on in these notebooks. If you don't know programming or whatnot, it will, it will look a bit weird, but you will start to recognize some patterns and some naming and stuff. Then you can start to learn about like what PyTorch is actually uh, how to uh, to do the motion, um, but that's what I would start with. Look at the actual research thing, which is nothing mystical. It's literally like a bunch of notebooks. And then the next thing you should be doing pretty fast is start to read deep learning paper um, because that's a foundation into which like the information is shared across the research community. Uh, so pick a field that interests you, let's say computer vision, like natural language processing, whatnot, and then quickly get up to speed with research paper, like try to read, I don't know, like three a weeks, right? Read them. Even if you don't understand nothing, it doesn't matter because at some point you're going to do some pattern matching about what's going on in a research paper, what's the structure. And then as you go into one specific field, you start to like recognize like, oh, they always re or like uh, uh, reference this particular paper. Maybe it should be the next one on my list. And then do spend a good amount of time on learning Python, but much less on that, like uh, than a machine learning engineer. Like uh, just learn about it to get familiar with like the computing library uh, that are like orbiting around PyTorch. This is like NumPy, Panda, Polar, SciPy, this type of stuff so that you can understand like the whole package that is going on in these research. 
And next up, you should be very familiar and, and fluent in reproducing a research paper. Because like now what you will be able to do is you're gonna build a muscle memory of like translating research interaction into working code that show the output. Um, and this is hard, like it's not easy to do, but you should, like it, it, it will not be like impossible to do either. In all research paper, there's always like the simple stuff that say they train deep learning model MNIST just to validate if like it actually work. And then you kind of kind of build up and do the whole analysis if you want to. Finally, like once you get the hang of this, quickly just aim for an internship at an AI lab. Even if you are an undergrad, um, that's the best way to, to learn like uh, how to do novel deep learning research is to be in a deep learning research lab. It works, like just just ping, cold, cold ping like a, a PI, uh, showcase all the thing that you've done, all the thing that you know and that you're excited and whatnot. I've done it three times during my undergrad, not for like a machine learning lab in general, but all kind of uh, neuroscientific lab. And it worked well. If you're a motivated individual and it, like you, it look like you know what you're doing roughly, head of the lab will usually want to have some individual like this in their team. If you're trying to make an AI product, the roadmap is much less about AI, much more about software. You don't like if you want to make an AI product that works, usually should not train any model from scratch ever. So instead of like using framework like TensorFlow, PyTorch, all this stuff. Take a wrapper framework like uh, fast.ai. Um, it abstracts all of the complexity of PyTorch. This is like a specific wrapper for PyTorch. It, it will get you to uh, the stage of using a model and fine tuning it fairly, fairly quickly. I have a, uh, uh, a notebook in the description from uh, the creator of PyTorch. You'll see like that the code that they're using in this notebook. Very sparse, there's not that much happening. Um, there are other things you can use here, but this one is simple enough, I like it. Second, you should learn Python in here to feed your pre-trained model data um, with the right format, right? That's kind of the extent into which like you should know your programming. If the, the model is the main thing that is uh, within your AI product or feature, it will also come handy uh, to know Python really well um, for the rest of your building the product thing because next step is really to kind of serve and put this model somewhere. Um, usually when you have an AI product, it's not just an endpoint that you need. It's like a web app usually type of stuff. So you should kind of be familiar with like a framework that help you build a web app. And in this case, I would recommend Django because there's a lot of tutorial out there with Django and it's in Python. Everything you will do with this will kind of be all self-contained within Python and within like a Django application you could do. It doesn't have to look good at this point, you just have to be out there and working too. That's what this one I would recommend. There's others like Flask and a bunch, but here Django, I think it's is a good one. And then you should learn enough cloud computing to host your own app. Like I put AWS everywhere here, but you can go Google Cloud or like even Versal like type of service if you're into like uh, JavaScript or whatnot. Uh, but the whole point is that don't try to put it into your home servers and whatnot. Put it in, always put it in the cloud, put the web app on there, and then like you have a, a, an AI product. Finally, you should go for like learning just enough SQL here to kind of manage the in and out of your data. Cool thing with Django is don't you don't need like that much um, knowledge. There's something called an ORM um, that will do most of the like SQL thing for you. And that's it, like you launch that thing, show it to family and friend, and you iterate, and then you have an AI product or AI feature, it will most likely be hot garbage. But at least you got the first iteration out. Now you know the steps. But you see, all of these three have very, very different type of dynamic. So really set a clear goal at the start. Hope this is a bit useful if you're an absolute beginner and would like to follow like a kind of a weekly roadmap type of thing. Um, you can click into the next video that we'll show in a few. And don't hesitate to ask questions in the comment section. I'm here to help. And uh, for this roadmap that I'm going to put out there, I'm going to keep it more generalist uh, for someone that wants to understand deep learning at the at the general level, not specifically for a machine learning engineer, researcher, or like uh, making AI products. So that's it. And have a great week, everyone.